<laughs> oh, uh, good morning. How's it going? We're getting through all kinds of things this morning. So, luckily, well, others are going to be doing most of the talking today. My voice seems to be messed up for some reason. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. And it wasn't oh, a good. wine dinner last night. So. <laughs> I was going to say, Kevin, do we have to talk about problems that you may have? <laughs> No no, 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 Mark. You are live. You can actually roar yourself. You know. <laughs> oh, you're on mute. I don't know. What... We lost you. There's Sorry, no geez, I'm so late to this thing. Roar, <laughs> roar. Is this right? Uh, Is that good? Uh, yeah, that 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 works out quite well. Good morning. Okay, good. Oh, good to see you, uh, Chewy and uh, Stina and. Uh, uh, Aaron, Donald, always good to have everybody with us today. So uh, Chewy's gonna... coming to us from Austin. What? Where? Yeah, I'm gonna rather than Houston, uh, but I'm gonna be heading down to Austin here after this live stream. Not directly oh. after, but uh, drive down. There is Sequel Saturday in Austin tomorrow. Um, oh. I'm assuming they have a precon today. Maybe that's what Chewy's gonna go to later today. But uh, yeah, so if you happen to be in the Austin area, come by to the free sequel Saturday, attend sessions, maybe mine, maybe not. If you do, say hi. So <laughs> look forward to it. Oh, well, that's awesome. Uh, and uh, I'll let everyone know I am heading out to the MVP Summit trying to rep, uh, you know, everyone and, and the things that we're looking for in the tech space to find out what's coming up in the next year. Um, uh so excited to be there kevin you're not coming are you i'm gonna do it virtually so okay. i'm gonna try to learn as much you you definitely learn a whole lot more in person but okay. um yeah i i chose to not go to that because i still got to work and i'm gonna go to vegas and i think you're gonna be at vegas as well right so uh yes i month. will be in vegas um in fact this just came in i let me let me share my screen i I'm kind of excited about this. Uh, where is it? Window. Oh, there it is. Uh, so, uh, just got this uh, notification is out. Uh, it will definitively be delivered in time for um, for Fabric Conference. Fabric Friday uh, pins will be available. Uh, just hit me up. There's a limited number of them. Uh, so there's only 50 of those. There's one uh, with Mark with your name on it and Kevin Sweet. with your name on it. And uh, 48. Yes. No, 47, one with your name on it. So 47. Oh, right. 47. And Alex Powers has claimed one. I, uh, so I'm going to hold They're one They're going him, fast. But, yes, so they are going fast. So um, uh, if you are thinking about or, or about joining us or coming uh, to Vegas Make sure you hit me up and we'll see you there, okay? So I think and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be nice to her because I think she's driving into work, but Stina in Texas, can mm -hmm. we reserve one for her too? Oh, if she's gonna be there. All right, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I and uh, so so uh for like I don't know what anyone's real names are or what you look like. So please um be kind when we meet in person. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not, like, unless you have your avatar, your YouTube avatar with like a, a name bubble on top of that, which is like the AI uh, I'm really hoping for, the altered AI, the meta verse <laughs> I'm, I would like is, is to just see that with like notifications around people. Yeah, just so see, see like pop ups over our heads. Yeah. Of yeah. Our username. Yeah. That, yeah. That's exactly right, right? That would be absolutely fantastic from my point of view. Yeah, so so when you introduce yourself, first introduce yourself with your handle, not your yes. name. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I uh, told you I was Mark Walter. I Sorry, I meant Mark Walter CPA. <laughs> <laughs> I got it, got it. There, yes. there's, it's, uh, oh, yeah. Vegas is going to be great. Um, it is. It, it's going to be so much fun. Yeah. So what that what that means though, Chris, right, is we're gonna have a little bit of an altered schedule here, right? 
just to yep. be totally clear with everybody we got today marcus is helping us out we look forward to this next week there'll be no live stream then the week in between um the the summit and the conference we will have a live stream and then mm-hmm. be off again and then go forward from there well i actually uh i, I have Do i have it wrong? like we could get into and like actually I, mean, <laughs> I, I got i there's like stuff we're doing right so like next week there's no official live stream yep uh oh boy having too many computers here is like messing me up. <laughs> okay um I know there's a couple special things I think you're doing, right? So we got Miguel Myers. He's going to be here the week in between MVP Summit and uh, uh, and the Fabric Conference. On your Wednesday. This is going to be a big one because he's going to be announcing all new functionality and features, that roadmap items that we have not talked about. We haven't seen. I haven't seen it yet. Um, okay. I'll admit. I saw it the last time when we did him as a surprise guest and then like after the live stream i said hang on you just dumped a whole lot of new stuff on us are you gonna have new stuff for this this other meeting or do we just do that presentation he said nope totally two separate presentations mm. totally new content so make sure you stop by for that um there will be no official live stream um uh during the week of the community conference so the wednesday and friday will be off but uh, I will be live at the Microsoft Fabric Community Conference. The, I'll be doing pop-up live streams for my mobile. Um, so some of them will be short. Some of them will be longer form interviews. Uh, you know, we're just going to be kind of like, you know, what's that bill, like that meme, like, we'll do it live. We're going to be doing yeah. it live from the conference. So be aware of that. Um, I think the pop-ups then, will be fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should be fun. I got all new gear. I got this whole like microphone portable set coming in. I got these portable lights that we'll be using. So it should be good. Should be good. So in other Um, words, 12 hours at TSA. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. That's actually a good call out. I should plan for that. (laughs) (laughs) Glad I could. Um, And then after that, this is we're announcing now we've locked in Scott Sewell is going to be talking about Dataverse and Fabric April 3rd. This is right after uh, the conference. So if you're if you use Dynamics or use Power Apps or use any of that stuff and you want to get data into Fabric, Scott is going to be going into and talking about that. Um, uh, so do um, uh, do look for that. Right. Um Oh, Cody's got a question about the live pop-ups. Um, I have some commitments already on the live pop-ups. Who will be there and, and who, who won't? Um, uh, I, I don't want to make commitments, though, so uh, you know, because it's going to be interesting. But maybe we might see... Uh, I'm going to try to get, like, a rune, and I'm going to try to get... Uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, um, uh, so like maybe Bogdan or someone mm-hmm. else to like just do a little interview or something along those lines. Um, but like, you know, you, you name it, we're going to be hitting up people at the conference, trying to get them to come off, talk about what, what they're excited about, talk about you know, the different things that they got going on. So uh, do look for those just live streams are just going to pop up in your stream. It'll be very little notice, but you can go back and watch them on the channel. Okay. I'm, I'm hoping you get Cody T. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> That'll be really good. All right, but we're uh, we're not here to like just plug this YouTube channel. Like that's uh, we got a lot of stuff coming on. But Mark, you're in the middle of doing something. Well, hang on. Ground rules. Yes, mm-hmm. Kevin, you gotta keep me. I'll, on. I'll stop. I, I know. I was excited too to get to Mark. So I was, yes, was going to start rules. spamming. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rule one: Please prefix any questions with a Q. Just like guy in the cube, just start off like that. Um, uh, and then rule number two, just don't spam stuff and we'll be good to go. Okay. Um, with that, uh, Mark, do you want to introduce yourself to the group? Uh, give people your background and let, let them know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, for I, I, I think I know a bunch of, of the people in the chat, but my name is Mark Walter. Um, I live out in Eugene, Oregon. Some of my background is that I am a financial analyst in accounting. 
So I'm squarely on the, the business side of, of analytics. Uh, I picked up Power Pivot back in the day and it just became my thing and my passion. And um, I enjoy community learning. I'm a member of SML and that's how I know these guys. So just happy to be here and thanks for letting me share. Awesome. And you've started an interesting journey of going through a book in that study group. What book are you going through, Mark? We're going through the Dax Bible. The Definitive That's Guide right. to Dax by, oh. by this guy, uh, what's his name? Marco Russo. Oh, isn't there multiple authors? Is it Al didn't Alberto, <laughs> Alberto have something? Ferrari. Like yeah. 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 So it's All a book right. I've I've had for a long time and I've I've read various chapters. And when this year started, I thought, I'm just going to read this thing from first chapter to chapter 20 or 22. And uh, I, I posted about it and got a number of people from SML to read it along with me. And we've been meeting weekly and just having a good time, just kind of working through it. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so question for our community today. This is a question of the day. Do you own the definitive guide to DAX already? If you have it, post yes in, 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 uh, in the chat, let us know. Uh, you know, if you're looking for it, I think I've got a book list out on my on my website. You can go check that out. But it's available on Amazon and, and all of your the finest book retailers, right? So, and I think that's... another or an updated copy is coming out in the next year or so. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Wow, you got oh, the inside that scoop. Is awesome. Yeah. Oh, we're getting yeses. We're getting. Oh, not yet, Eric. Oh, oh my. wow look at look at jack jack's an overachiever two copies yeah two copies yep well I, i'll say the jack joins the, us yeah yeah the nice thing about paper and electronic is copy paste right oh. mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes yeah. i want to write in the book and, and other times i just like it on my device so it's always there if i need it yeah there there are a handful of like core books i really like to have physical and digital uh, i'm gonna put in a plug for my favorite one is the definitive guide to dax because uh, i think that takes you through more like business case scenarios but well that one's that one was dax patterns that you held oh, dax, i'm sorry dax patterns i said yeah yes. yeah yeah i have that one too um yep. i think i have it in paperback and oh. what's wonderful on the dax patterns is they're all free online too so yeah but it is nice to have it in paperback as well. Yeah. So I, I, so I love SQL BI, but when I teach new students and they're just learning DAX, before they get to the definitive guide, I, I do recommend this book. This is mm -hmm. a little bit of an older book from Matt Allington, but it's yep. Supercharged Power BI. And that's, uh, that's a great start, starter book if you're just getting into DAX. And uh, I'll put out a plug for that book, too. It is a very good book. Matt put a ton of time and energy into it. It's helped countless people to get up and running. And I feel, I mean, please go buy the book. I have, I bought, I think, two copies. I lost one in the flood. I rebought it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, please go buy that book. He had a couple people steal the digital mm -hmm. copies of that book and share it around and plagiarize really? his work. And yeah. To the point where I think he retired because of it. He, so, he just um, recently retired. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I don't mm. know if that's really the Dude. reason, but I I would imagine that played into it, right? Like, having your life's work stolen and just published out has got to be mm. crappy, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if we could get support him uh, in his retirement, go buy that book. All right. But we're, so we, we're framed up where we're at. Um, what we've been, what you've been doing, is, is going through this book. We're here to talk about Treatas, Mark. Can you yeah. explain Treatas to us? I I can, and it's kind of a magic <laughs> function, right? And I've always said that Treatas always gets me out of a bind. And what Treatas does is it is it allows you to kind of jump that requirement for needing a strong relationship between a dim and a fact table. And so if there's ever a need that you need to create a virtual relationship between two, two tables, Treatas allows you to do that. 
And the the secret sauce of Treedaz is is that it allows you to convert the lineage of a column and have it apply to the second column that that you want to filter. So it, it it's it's really doing a couple things. It's creating a virtual relationship, but it's also allowing that column to to apply its filter over a completely different column in a different table. Yeah, and I I mean honestly that just that creates so many possibilities and uh, potential items there uh, where if someone wanted to get started with treat as mark how would you recommend them getting started in working with treat well i would i would go to the definitive guide to dax or dax.guide and just learn about what that function does um i i love treat as and and i just had a recent um example that I just kind of pulled out of my hat during one of my courses that didn't act as I expected it to. So I'm, I'm always learning about DAX, but Treedaz is, um, it, it seems pretty simple on the surface, but, uh, there's some, some nuance to it for sure. Yeah. So you, you were telling us that you, you teased us with that example beforehand. So we haven't totally seen this either. And I'm kind of excited now. Let, yeah. Let's, Let's. Is this a good time for you to? Yeah, sure. Jump into that demo, or am I jumping? Yeah, down? sure. I am no, it's, it's totally fine. Let's do right. it. So I will share my screen. All right, here we go. Here we go. No, we, we can oh, see I, it. Oh, I am sharing. Okay, great. Yep. Yeah, you got to move your restream <laughs> out. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> so I do a college class that meets on Monday nights and it goes from six to 10 PM, which is just crazy that it goes that, that late, but I was getting to the end of the course and I had a few minutes left and we're in chapter five of the definitive guide to DAX. And, and we've, I've been experimenting with, with treat as and different alternatives with filter context. And we were talking about role playing dimensions where the classic example is that you would use a inactive relationship from your time dimension and then connect it directly to your order date. So say you have two dates in your sales fact table and you generally create and report based on ship date. But in this instance, you want to create a measure that that some sales by what was ordered by order date. And so I was walking through this example where you create this inactive relationship and then use relationship to generate a report where you can have the amount of sales that you shipped and also the amount that was ordered on those same days. And this date, of course, coming from our, our timetable. But then I said, could we use treat as as a, as an alternative to use relationship. And I remember hearing at a conference that some guy said that he always uses treat as rather than use relationship. And we were talking just prior to the stream about another benefit of using treat as over use relationship is that you don't run into issues with role level security, like you normally would using use relationship. So even if treat as isn't more efficient than this inactive relationship, it does have a purpose if, especially if you're using row level security. Can you explain to me, what does that mean to someone? Why would I have an issue with row level security and treat as, or with, the, with use relationship? I, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I think it has something to do with the row level security working through that active relationship and you trying to bypass it with a secondary relationship and return results that isn't consistent with, with the security level. Uh, that is yeah. exactly it, yeah. is that if you have a, let's say a type one, so as is relationship and a type two relationship or what as was. Yeah. Um, uh, and you, your active relationship is the as is um, uh, relationship. That is security. You cannot, you can't defeat that security. Like that 
passes HIPAA, that passes mm. passes mm. all of your security requirements. There's no way to uh, go around that situation. So that will maintain that no matter what, which might mean historically you give people access to stuff that. Either maybe they don't, you don't want them to see, or shouldn't see blended yeah. in, right? Like when you look historically, why am I seeing like, uh, like all these different like stores, right? Like I just want to see my store historically because mm -hmm. I have access to, to my store, right? Um, uh, but as was, right? You know, you know, if you switch over, you'd see just that one store his historically. Um, uh, and and that can be very beneficial uh, in certain situations, right? It and and but in order to make that work with throw level security, you actually have to remove the joins altogether and mm. then use tree tas inside mm. of the the model. And uh, so, uh, I, I don't just play dumb on these live streams all of the time. Uh, <laughs> some of the times I you put me on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I apologize. I, Why I, is uh, that, Mark? Business analyst. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, I try to now. follow the like lawyer rule, like don't ask a question that you don't know the answer to. Um, uh, so, but that that that's why, right? So that make does that make sense? Why would you yeah. that? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Back to your screen. All right. Okay. Thanks. So so what we were doing in class is we were supposing if we could use treat as an as an alternative to this use relationship and this inactive relationship, and what i did I'll, I'll i'll pull it up is and it was 950 and i'm just trying to like get fancy at the very end and pull this out of my hat but i create this measure where is instead of this use relationship that i would normally do where i've got use relationship and it's very simple all i have to do is assign the, the two columns date and order date but then i use this this function instead where I create um, a similar measure, but I am establishing the, the values of my time dim date. And I'm using that time dim as the input table for my treat as. So th this is the form of treat as you just write treat as, and then you give it the the column that you want to apply into the second table as a filter. And so I used to read this as treat this table or this list of dates in this case as the filter for, for order date. That's just how I've always mentally read this is that I'm giving it the column that I want to treat as the the filter over this and what's going on here is that this list of values is assuming the lineage of course of order date so it just works mm -hmm. so i so i write my calculate i put my ship amount in or my total sales and i just use this treat as table as as my argument in calculate and i hit enter and i go watch this it's going to be the same and I come back to my screen and it's that, right? It's like 9.59 and like half the people are sleeping. <laughs> and I'm like, I want to go too. So I'm going to go home and I'm going to figure, I'm going to figure this out, but I, I can promise you that I'm going to learn something and then I'm going to bring it back here. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> so the first thing I did was I thought, well, there's obviously other filters in here. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about on SML, especially in chapter five about calculate and the filters that we see and don't see. Right. And so when we're writing calculate, we see filters that we explicitly write, but we may not always be conscious of other filters propagating through our model that we can't see as explicitly in this calculate. So what I do is I write remove filters on date on time date and I hit enter and I come back here and I go I fixed it looks great right so then I decide that I'm going to put a slicer up here on a completely different column from my timetable 
that that represents month and year. <laughs> so <laughs> Kevin's laughing. He already knows. <laughs> <laughs> so then I come up here and I go because I want to isolate some 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 months, and so I hit January, and I put in this difference column. And all of a sudden, it almost works, right? I've got most matches and then some that don't match within this month. So I pull in, so I pull in some more information. I, I create a calculated column in my table that's a combination of the ship date and the, and the order date. And what I discover is that it, it works when I have the shipment and the order leaving on the same month or assigned to the same month, but it doesn't work where I have the ship date outside of the selected month. So what this is reminding me of is I have to be very conscious of all of the filters that are impacting my calculate, whether I see them or not. Mm. And if you know how to think in terms of expanded table, what, what I realized was that when, when I wrote this and I removed filters over dim date, I wasn't inactivating a relationship of that entire table. I was just unfiltering that column, that specific date column in my expanded table. So in order to satisfy every column of my time dim, I have to remove filters over the entire table. And when I did that and hit enter, then it didn't matter which, which column from that timetable I selected. It was always consistent and showing me, showing me the comparison between amounts shipped and amounts ordered just as it would have if I used use relationship. So now your, your screen's a little hard to see. I don't know if you could blow up the visual. But when you actually change the value in the slicer, does your set of dates that's in that first column, you're only getting that month still, right? Right. And so, so the slicer works on the, the dimension labels, but when I did that remove filter over the timetable, it's affecting that evaluation of that measure. Mm. Is that what you're asking, yeah. Kevin? Yeah, yeah, no, that was exactly what I was asking. And it, um, I'm thinking about the query that gets produced because yeah, that, that kind of makes, that makes sense. Right. And so, so that, so that's actually part, part of my learning because I was like, is, is this going to still work? Well, it does. And so, so the way that I think of this is this slicer is coming from my labels in my dimension table. But when I write this measure and I say remove filters over the time dim, I imagine this is removing filters over all of the expanded columns that are in my fact table. So I'm, I'm removing any potential filter that may affect my expanded table, even though I've still got these dim labels here that are obeying that slicer selection. Oh, I, okay. I think that makes sense. Can we look at the query that this produces? You have the DAX query feature enabled. So if we just use the um, performance, the optimize. Yep. Let's go over to optimize. Yeah. Here we go. Because what sure. you're going to see is another place that treat as pops up. Yeah. Hit start recording. Now make another selection on your visuals, or you can hit refresh. That's fine too. And could you collapse the filter panel? Yeah, that's not useful inside. Yeah. So we copy this this query. Just yep. click the bottom link that says "Open and Oh, okay. X queries. Yep. And it'll, it'll copy, it'll push it all the way into a DAX query for you. Where, sorry, where, where's that link? That one right there. Click okay. it. Click it for real. Okay. Oh, now, interesting. Yeah, if you use your control button and if you have a scroller on your mouse, you could zoom in more. 
or you could use the zoom thing at the very bottom that's yeah. crazy that it just opens here yeah now mm -hmm. let's look at this okay so um you want to talk or you you want to talk through what this is doing here or do you want me to talk through this yeah <laughs> why don't you talk. yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah all right yeah, you all, know right, what? all right <laughs> I love this because I, yeah, go ahead, Chris. I'll, so I'll uh, right I'm going to learn something here. Wrong. Um, so no, we didn't have to write this. You didn't write this, right? You right. wrote the tweet as the tabular engine wrote this query, this optimized query to execute back against the tabular model. And so what it first did is it defined a table filter. Okay. And it's going to be using the treat as, and because you, you know, the slicer, it's October 2023. 20, yeah. And the time date is month year. So the, the, the date dimensional and the year it's, it's, it's setting that filter table. So we just right. have that one value, right? Yeah. Then it's creating another variable. It's going to do a summarize on the column. So it's going to be creating an, another table that we're going to have, um, based upon the, the, you know, ro rolling up on the time date, uh, date dimension. Um, uh, it's going to be defining your grand road, grand total row. Um, it's going to apply that first filter table. So it's going to basically say where the tree as is October, 2023, right? Then get the ship underscore from measures ships mm -hmm. there, or yeah. And then, uh, you know, these other dimensional values that you have in here. So ship. Um, uh, or I'm sorry, these aren't dimensions. These are, are very, those, are, those are, those are measures, right? measures, measures. Yeah. 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 What's in Ship. red is, is the, uh, is the name it's going to use to come back. Right. And then the expression happens to be a measure. Oh gosh. Look at that. How interesting. Mm -hmm. And then it displays the, you know, so it runs through, creates the items, uh, creates the, um, uh, you know, runs that query. So it creates that table. And then it says, okay, now I'm going to display, uh, I'm going to be displaying the top N or 502 yeah. of yeah. these values. Scroll down just a little bit. <clears throat> and that final top N is going to be what's, what is going to be evaluated and displayed. And then mm -hmm. it's going to order it by that grand total row and time descending, descending. yeah mm, interesting so but so let's it's querying let's do, the table right yeah but yeah let's yep. let's do this as well so find one of your measures let's take the one that you're doing the treat as find it over in your data pane to the right okay and right click on it mm -hmm. and say uh define and evaluate or was there just a define yeah Define, yeah, and, define and evaluate. That's going to open up in a evaluate. new tab. Okay. So let's. Um, wait, what was that? I expected it to give us the code, and I couldn't see on yours real quick. Do you want me to do it again? Um. Why is it not the the whole treat as measure? It should give us. No, no, no. Um, so I just can't read your your whole screen. Uh, let's right. go get the code. If we go back to the um, um, the the like report tab, and if you bring up your measure, you have let's let's grab the code from the measure itself. Okay, so a everything after the equal sign. Okay. And copy that, and let's do let's see if we could do this live. Go okay. back to your DAX query. Uh, go to the first one that you had, the one that mm -hmm. we has to summarize that Chris walked through. Uh, Probably query two. Yeah. Right here. Okay. okay. Yep. Right. And so you see you have your, your after the filter table in the summarize columns, we have ship, then the first one, then the treat as. Yeah. Treat as after the label, it has just this is the measure to use. Yeah. Re replace that whole thing with the code we just copied. 
Okay. Uh, leave the comma. Yeah, right there. Okay. Because we could put an expression here, right? So now if we do a format, let's see if we did it right because we should. The format is up top. Yeah. Okay, great. It format it. So this is kind of like redefining our measure, right? But it's in line because what I want to show is we have that that tree as that's up top that came from our slicer, right? Yeah. And that's being put into a variable that's a filter table that's in our summarize. But now when we think about this is how kind of it expands all the way out into the engine. Okay. The code from your measure gets replaced in as that expression. And so within each row that's running in that summarize columns, this measure is running, right? And then remember our context is whatever that intersection is by that row. So when the date that's on our, our visual is shown there, yeah, we're doing the, the treat as to override it with the remove filters, right? We're removing the filters and treating it the values we got from the date as the the other date, the ship date. As as the order date. Yeah. And I think if if you think about pasting things directly into the summarized columns, it may and, and this is the first time just watching you do this. I've been thinking about this, even though I've been presenting about DAX queries. Hmm. I'm wondering yeah. if it's going to help people kind of see, hey, this is the code that's actually running within this summarized columns, right? So now I could think through each time it's going to run. It's you know my summarized columns is going to get my list of of rows to return and then execute this measure for each one, and I could think through how that's doing it. If you yeah. run this, we should get all the same results. Well, I'm also going to say, uh, along with what Kevin is saying here. It's good to understand how how to generate this, how to mm -hmm. leverage these types of capabilities, especially if you're trying to work with paginated reports and you need mm -hmm. to have efficient queries that go back against your model so that your your paginated reports are performant. Understanding yeah. how this works, mm -hmm. understanding how you can get Power BI to generate efficient code versus you trying to have to create your own code can be exorbitantly helpful. Yeah. yeah. I think this is similar. And so, so correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, but I think that we're looking at this to get a better visual idea of, of what's going on with, a, with evaluation context. Like we've got the time date mm -hmm. up, up there. And then we're imagining that, that query running, uh, from the perspective of each time dim date. I think mm -hmm. it's similar, yeah. or at least it feels similar to how I talk to my students and say, you've almost got to be able to peer through each cell here and mm -hmm. imagine what's going on with your model in the back, right? We talked about last Saturday on, on SML and I showed a visual where I have two visual cells blown up and you can actually see the filtered model through these cells. And the fact that, that every cell is returning a different query result is pretty amazing how how fast mm -hmm. this thing queries by data point or by mm -hmm. matrix cell yeah yeah i'm and i'm right there with you but yeah i think you've explained it just right um so sorry i got a big old bug flying through my <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had to get rid of it it's been flying oh, it's still around as long as it's not on me um but yeah i think this is where I, I kind of agree with Chris. I kind of got started with getting deep into DAX queries when I needed yeah. to write some paginated reports. Okay. And I now think all the way in DAX queries. And I started by reading through just the way Chris did, you know, what was generated and then started writing my own from there and then started mm -hmm. overriding my measures and test within the DAX query view. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And now take it even to this next step to where if you plug in the measure expression right in that query, like we were just talking about, I'm thinking it could help visualize like, hey, when I'm when I'm reading through this summarized columns, here's my expression. And I could imagine, you mm -hmm. know, like you said, going, here's the coordinates, here's what's happening on my, mm -hmm. here's the row I have. And for each row, this code is running. So what's happening when I have right. row one, row two, and I could see right. all that code all at one place rather than having to keep it all in my head. Right. You may have no, just changed my presentation really for tomorrow. 
Wow. <laughs> Are you telling me that you're not going to be part of SML tomorrow? No, I'll be in Austin tomorrow. So, oh, okay. I got to right. look at what time I'm presenting, but I'm not sure. I'll, I'll join it for a little bit if I can off my phone. Okay. Yeah, I'll, my well, that's great. Over, so. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well, that was wonderful. Fantastic. Mark, did, did you have another demo too of, of something else you wanted to show with? Uh, I definitely do have have more to show. Yeah. Okay. All if, right. If you think that we sorry that we have time. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 We got we, we got about another fifteen minutes. So. Yep. So in so in going through through that example and and if you've got the definitive guide to DAX, there's a page in there that's always stumped me. It's page one seventy three, and it's at the very end of chapter five, and it just talks about the rules of of calculate. And when I went through that, that treat as example with my course, and then I got back and, and kind of worked through it, what, what that reinforced for me is that, you know, I was almost using treat as like it was a calculate modifier, right? Mm. And if we look at the steps of, of calculate, the calculate modifier step in almost right, right away and can alter or, or override what's in our original filter context but actually treat as is is a table it's it it generates and assigns lineage but it is just a explicit table filter in in calculate so that helped me understand why i was running into those conflicts with original filter context when i had kind of hoped that it would be overriding so this is the steps that I've created for myself. I'm not saying that that these are necessarily perfect, but when I read that page in in chapter five, uh, this is kind of how how I interpret these steps: is original filter context modifiers like cross filter, and by the way, we could have used cross filter instead of remove filter timetable to set cross filter to none to deactivate that relationship like I had originally thought that that time dim column did. And then we have keep filters that is technically a, um, a filter modifier. And then of course our explicit filters come in and, and have the chance to override these modifiers, right? They, that's why they come in last in these, these calculate steps. So I just thought that that, that was, uh, it was it was good to read that that last page of that chapter and and create my own visual in a, in a way that I understood. Yeah, and I yeah. I think that's helpful. Cody had a comment in the chat a little bit ago that he was surprised that you didn't solve the first pro, you know the first demo that you had using keep filters right. And I think this kind of table kind of helps lay it out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, I definitely could have used keep filter in there. Um, but yeah, I was trying to remove filters, right? I was, mm -hmm. was trying to use remove filters over time. Um, so yeah. Well, All right. It, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. 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 Go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say, yeah, it, it, it's interesting to see how that got translated into a variable that was first established, right? The, the, the treat as. Well, the, the keep filters, right? If you go back, uh, you, okay. you know, there was no keep filters inside of the query that was executed. It basically said, okay, instead of keeping any filters that we'd want, is it first established um, uh, on, I think it's the first query. It's, it said, uh, it's the treat as it created a, a filter table, basically, that was then applied throughout um uh, was well, that was that was the treat as at the top stay on query two, go all the way to scroll all the way to oh, the top yeah, yeah, is what chris talking about yeah right there yeah so that that's the treat as when power bi the front end generates the query mm -hmm. your slicers your filter pane you know your selections could generate variables that are that they use treat as to produce the table and then they take that whatever you selected off of that um, or however they could determine yeah. what you select it from and then the they slicer. put that into a into a filter table for the summarized columns. 
-hmm. Yeah. In your case, it was from the slicer. Yeah. So I'm, so I use treat as in my DAX when I'm writing DAX, but I know that, that when you go back into these queries and honestly, I don't go back very often, but I do know that, that in the background treat as is used all over the place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and in this case, Kevin's saying that, 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 that slicer selection had treat as applied to it. So it would take my selection and, and apply it to that column. Yeah. It, and it has to do with how it needs to generate the query versus what we're normally writing in Power BI is the measure. And so in the measure, we're starting to override a little bit of what's happening in the query with the treat yeah. as that you use within the measure, the code we yeah. pop, we put into the expression part down there. Yeah. Hmm. My, so my trick was, or my, my block was not realizing initially that, that I needed to use a calculate modifier to remove those original filters that were there. Cause now, cause if you think about it, that, that time dim date column that I was selecting is impacting, or it's a two prong filter. So unless I remove filters on the original relationship that's expanding into my fact table, when I select a column in, in, in the time dim, that's not only obeying my treat as statement and assigning it to the order date, but it's also got these natural filters transferring through the original relationship that are impacting that, that ship date column as well, which right. is why I, I, which is why I only got positive results when they both agreed mm -hmm. when we ordered and shipped in January. But the moment that we ordered and then shipped in the next month, it's a filter complex or it's a filter, um, conflict between that two prong filter, I guess, coming from, from that date table. So I had to remove it, right? So I had to remove all of the filters from that and then reestablish it through Treedas to only focus on that, that order date column. Makes sense. Uh, that, yeah, that does make sense. Interesting. Gosh, and all done with Treedas, right? Can we go back to your original Treedas function? Yeah. So another thing that I have started doing through this is writing these tables or these variables explicitly outside of calculate. And it further reinforces that, Hey, these aren't modifiers. Cause if these were modifiers, they'd have to be baked in my calculate. Yeah. They, I, I couldn't evaluate them out outside of my calculate. <clears throat> so if I write it like this, not only is it reinforcing that it's, it's a separate explicit table expression but i can write it like this and say i want the time dimension and this list of dates to to be the filter over my order date so i literally write it like this every time now and say t the time dimension filters sales order date and it just helps me reinforce mm -hmm. that i'm i'm filtering through my model in a virtual way even though I'm not seeing it in the model view, I'm actually creating a, a filter. I'm actually directing this, this time dimension column to create a relationship, right? And go through sales order date. Yeah, I like this method of writing things as variables as well. Because then if you wanna change something there, you, you can. And then you're not thinking like if you wrote it inside of your whole overall calculate and kept embedding things, you may mistakenly think it's being impacted right. by the calculate. That's um, right. And so, yeah, it's, uh, I, I like the way you write it here as well. It, I think it's great documentation. Variables are a, a great way, not only to, to separate out your thinking, but you know, document it for your future self. Yeah. So. I, I taught this just last night and I warned my students, I go, this is going to look like programming. So it's going to look <laughs> a little scary, but trust me, it's, it's going to help us chunk out our code and, and make it more, um, more friendly in the end to troubleshoot and test. Yes. And, and the, one of the things I've always, uh, or I've liked in explaining this to business users is 
think of a variable as a cell you're defining inside of Excel that you'll yeah, then exactly. reference in other cells, right? Like, okay, I'm going to walk through this. I'm going to first define this cell, then I'm going to define this cell. Then I'm going to reference that cell, and then I'll do a V lookup on these other things, right? So that's all we're doing is defining cells and, and functions. So, yeah. Right. How many times have you been in Excel? And, and of course you can't format. So you're writing this like Greek, really long Excel formula and you get lost in the parentheses or the commas. You're like, you know what? I'm just going to create multiple columns and work through this equation. And yeah. so I call them helper columns. Well, that's how mm -hmm. I view variables here is that it gives you the opportunity to break it up. As, as long as you're not like, um, or, 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 as, or as long as you don't need to nest it in a calculate, it's a great way to just chunk through it, I guess. Yeah. 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 You're spot on. It, it's a great way to just break it up and, and yeah, uh, I, I'm a fan. I, and I think, I think when people see that side of it and how to you know think about it in that regards, then it becomes much easier for them to see how it relates you know what i mean yeah yeah you know, it's it suddenly it's not as scary as it could be right suddenly it's within the range of okay i got it right yep and and, and don parish is right we're all programmers it just depends upon the rigor that we apply to the work that we're doing yeah right i was i was mentioning to somebody you brought up kind of excel right and i was we we're talking about, we'll just go do this and do a V lookup in Excel. And I said, you know, have you ever thought about it? Probably about, you know, if you have your whole pool of people that say they know Excel, my venture would, my guess would be maybe 40% of those people actually know a V lookup if they even know how to <laughs> That's develop right. it. And yeah, then I yeah. started telling her that she's like, no, everybody knows that. And I says, no, pe only people that really kind of, they, they think it's coding in Excel. Yep. And, you know, I think that kind of pushes on Donald's thing, right? It's different levels of rigor. You you know, you could know how to do this in Power BI and get to a certain coding level, right? But we do a little bit of code. Don't be afraid of it, right? Just because it's code and, yeah. and, you know, you think you're not technical. You're, you may be a little more technical than, yeah. And at the end, she's like, oh my God, I'm so happy. I, I know how to code. <laughs> well, you know how to code that. <laughs> well, and, and, yeah. And honestly... There's a big argument that's gone on where, you know, if you distill coding, yeah, it is an Excel function. If you can do an L function, Excel function, you have a degree of coding capability. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. but Aaron is asking a question and I think he elaborated on it, but I want to clarify because I'm not hundred percent sure he's spot on here. I think so he's asking, yeah. since Power BI uses treat as itself all the time, should I expect it will always be deficient? Um, is it, uh, i.e., is it going to be uh, a performance or are we going to have performance issues yeah. with treat ads? Yeah. So, so if you read some of the articles, of course, the most performant method is to use a natural relationship. And then from there, if they say that natural relationship isn't available, tr treat as is the second option to say intersect or mm -hmm. filter. Yep. So, if you know how to create virtual relationships or you read up on them, treat as is right there. Yeah. And so yeah. that's another thing I love about treat as is, is that it is, it is performant. So yeah. in lieu of, of, of being able to leverage a natural relationship, which there's no reason to create a virtual one at that point, um, treat as is number two. Yeah. yeah. And, I, so and while I think it's, it's technically less performant. The, the natural relationship is more performant. Um, it is so very close as to, in most models, be similar or identical in performance. Um, mm. I use treat as in a type one, type two row level security situation on a 160 gig model with the cardinality level uh, in the uh, 120 millions of, of records on a dimension and the performance between loading uh, uh, loading visuals uh, with the direct join or with the treat as uh, was 
nearly unnoticeable. Uh, we could actually wow. measure it. We could define it. We could lock it down. Uh, so we could measure it. Um, users, though, were not radically impacted by it. Um, now, we had the we had optimized to the nth degree this model because it was so large and had so many users, right? Like it needed to be hyper performant. So adding in Treatas did not cause a you know a significant impact. Mm -hmm. You may find that in your models, it you know if you're not as hardcore on the star schema side it can be a, a bigger drag on you okay so um i guess it goes into it, that's why i wore the it depends t-shirt today <laughs> is because it's going to depend on perform or on your model okay yeah it'd be well, kind of fun to create a star schema but not create relationships and just use treat as all the time and see and see what happens yeah i don't know yep. what why you'd ever want to do that other than j just for fun and see to see what what happens but i've 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 been I impressed that, but... no i'm not <laughs> no, going to, no, no. please don't do that it. would be hard yeah. to write do it do it on a mini model yeah, yeah 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 but um i've i've enjoyed experimenting in the dax query view and and i had a corporate dashboard here where i have multiple divisions and we're scoring them we're scoring their performance and they each wanted slightly different criteria and what that meant I had to do is go back in query view and write separate tables for each of our divisions and then union them together and use that as the filter in my calculate. All that to say, it is crazy how efficient that query view and writing tables and then using those tables as filters in your measures perform in, in DAX. Yeah. All right. Well, we are nearly like... at time here. Uh, Mark. We're going to give you the last words. What uh, what next steps should people take? What uh, what tips would you give them? If he if he gets the last word, let me say one thing before okay. it's last. <laughs> Mark, you are doing a fabulous job helping all of us get through that book. Keep oh, it thank up. you so much. And keep any time that you can still come up with some of these aha moments. Right, it's great to share with the wider audience as well. Keep keep it up. You're doing great. Thank thank, thank you so much. I I don't pretend to be an expert. Um, I met with someone in, in in an SML this week, and he wants to get out in the community and involved. And I said, just be passionate about what what you do. Um, I'm I'm passionate apparently about DAX, and uh, I just love sharing with people that I think that I can help. So I don't try to come out as the expert. Um, I, I try to come out to just share it with, with people that I think can benefit from it. So I, I guess my last words are just, just enjoy it and get involved with community learning. Um, if you want to join SML, we meet every Saturday morning. It's a great environment for us to just chat and get to know each other. And every once in a while, we learn something like this, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're actually going chapter by chapter through this book. And it's just been very enjoyable for, for me and I'm, I, I think for others as well. Awesome. Wonderful. And with that, we got to bid everyone adieu. Uh, parting is such sweet sorrow. Uh, <laughs> but everybody, have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. Go see Kevin in Houston. Austin. 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 Um, hopefully, we'll see you at the Fabric Community Conference uh, in Vegas. Or we'll see you in two weeks with uh, Miguel Myers. Uh, you guys have a great day. Peace. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.